Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology. Let's head right into our morning briefing for the day. The Russian flanking maneuver is proving all too effective. The Ukrainian army is being swept aside by the Russian juggernaut, and general panic has seized the populace. Fortunately, the Ukrainians aren't the only ones who are worried. The Poles are pleading for full NATO protection. They've agreed to support the deployment of U.S. armed forces to former Warsaw Pact bases. Needless to say, we welcome this development. Poland has plenty of tank-friendly highways running straight into the Ukraine. An invasion from the West will prove significantly easier than a marine invasion from the Black Sea. This one is unbelievable. Ukrainian refugees are rushing to get the hell out of the country, right? So what do the Ruskies do? They begin to systematically strafe them, claiming they're actually Ukrainian guerrilla fighters. Now, we can hardly protect the entire Ukrainian populace, but higher authority wants us to attempt to intervene. Now, I imagine this is really just for PR purposes. In any case, I want you to treat this like a standard cap. Fly out to the patrol sector and keep an eye out for low-flying aircraft. If you spot a bandit, wax them. So it turns out that news report we saw last night wasn't just propaganda. And I looked it up and Poland actually joined uh, NATO in 1999, so two years after this campaign takes place. So that's why there aren't any, you know, there likely aren't any U.S. forces operating out of Poland uh, for at least up until this point in the campaign. But now they can. Refugee Line, USS Eisenhower CVN-69, date May 23rd, local time, 0600 hours, weather, fog, so tough landing today. Situation, huge numbers of Ukrainian refugees are pouring over the Polish and Romanian borders. Russian commanders are claiming that many of these refugees are guerrilla fighters. There have been numerous reports of Russian fighters strafing the refugee lines. Mission objective, there are two large groups of refugees traveling by truck into neutral Romania. Attack any Russian fighters harassing the refugee vehicles. Order battle, recommended aircraft F-14B, recommended weapons AIM-9M, AIM-54, AIM-120, threat suppression data, ground opposition none, air opposition unknown. We'll have two experienced wingmen on this mission and we'll be flying a patrol on the Ukrainian-Romanian border, south of Ivan Ivana Frankivsk, um, which I'm kind of surprised hasn't fallen to the Russians yet, and especially uh, Lviv, I think that is. Yeah, because that's not too terribly far from Belarus, so they must be, their lines must be around here right now. But uh, we'll take our trusty Tomcat, and uh, we'll take uh, Lotus Barrels for this mission. I'm not going to take additional Sidewinders, because they may very well be too busy focusing on refugee vehicles than attacking us, so. Let's see what we got for air opposition. Alright, we got experience. Big 29s, big 21s. These guys don't much care about us, so. Let's intercept these guys first who also want to intercept us. Perfect. So that means if they're trying to fight us, they can't be going after the trucks. We'll throw on jammers to call attention to ourselves, because I'd rather they go after us than civilian refugees. Which does bring to mind uh, the Syrian civil war. There are reports or claims, or whatever you want to call them, of Russians attacking civilians, and Syrians too, attacking civilians in that war. It seems to be a recurring theme in war, unfortunately. I mean, even in World War II, they bombed cities, and now in... Um, in Syria, they're bombing hospitals. The U.S. accidentally hit a hospital in Afghanistan. Getting close to a year ago now, I think, because they misidentified which side of the street I think they were supposed to shoot on or something like that. I think there was an Afghan forward air controller that gave them the wrong targeting information. You know, and during the uh, Bosnian-Serbian war, you know, there was genocide going on there. Genocide is routinely part of... Uh, an ethnic cleansing is the part of war in Africa. It's just unfortunate that in war, it always seems to be the average person that pays the price. Uh, let's speed things up a little bit. 
uh, let's get them above the horizon, so that way our missiles have a better chance of, uh, hitting him. There we go. We'll take the experienced guy. It doesn't really, you know, it's not like it gives us points or anything, but I, like, the challenge of a more difficult kill. Interesting, though, that this guy is hiding behind his wingman, whereas you see we're leading from the front. Alright, we're tracking. You made it. We've got him now. I don't know. It sounds like that sparrow's not gonna get anywhere close to him. We've got him now. Fuck one. Fuck two. Oh, he's gonna do that. Ah, oh, decoy with I'm taking a shot. Fuck two. Wow. Our sidewinders are just a pile of shit today. I think our wingmen are just wasting all our spare all their sparrows at this point. All right, we got him. Alright, so now the, uh, I guess they radioed for help, and now the MiG-21s are coming for us. That's interesting that they think they can touch us. <laughs> That's so cute of them. So, again, we'll put them above the horizon. There's our first sparrow. This might be enough to make him evade. And it is. We'll give our wingman permission to engage, not that they'll need it. We've got him now. Don't want to run into him now. Okay. So they splashed the extra fish bed. Now let's let's take stock of the situation here. See what trouble we can dig up. We have an IL-96, MiG-29, well, I'm always one for uh, reducing Russian air superiority in the region. So let's go for the MiG-29. And then our MiG-21 way out there. And uh, IFF confirms it is not friendly. I mean, technically it's unknown, but in this game that's as good as being not friendly. He seems to not be reacting to the fact that we're painting him. Okay, so this guy is, uh... Special. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, we've launched and he still has uh, no reaction. Oh, there he goes. Now he's starting to invade. Taking a shot. He spoofed that missile, but we've got another one up our sleeve. Come on, baby. Oh. that one. Alright, so let's close in. And he doesn't use his... He's got missiles. I don't know why he wasn't using his... Uh, his archer missiles on us. I mean, well, this guy is not fit out to be a fighter pilot. You know, it didn't react until he was very well under attack, barely managed to avoid those missiles. And again, we're being outclimbed, even though we shouldn't be. So we'll let our wingman deal with this guy. You're just gonna cheat like that. There's some flankers there. We're gonna avoid them because we don't have the missiles for them. We do have uh, a Russian transport though. Let's attack them because that's, uh, depending on what they're carrying, you know, whether it's personnel or equipment, that could be a fair blow to the Russian army. Okay, how about we did not kill that MiG-29 yet? Let's finish this guy. We have a MiG-21 there, experienced. He seems to be ignoring us from now. Fuel. Actually, we'll have a bug out. I guess we'll have to go back and finish off the... Uh, He's at 12 o'clock, turning right. That uh, make 29. And I sure would hate to be a Russian soldier in this plane right now. I don't know how they failed to... God damn it. How the fuck did they fail to shoot that guy down? So they both got themselves killed. What the fuck, wingman? What the fuck? Meanwhile, this guy thinks he's gonna run from us. Okay, fine. You can keep afterburning yourself into the ground. We got, we got plenty of fuel, so I don't know how my, I guess they had their afterburners on the whole time, but if that's the case, this guy would be, uh, big 29 stone have a lot of fuel. Okay, so the convoy got to where it was going. This guy should be burning himself up. He's scared of us, yet you took down our wingman? That pisses me off. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so he burned himself out. Good job, AI. That's like the one weakness in this game is generally the wingmen are competent, as you've seen. However, they aren't always competent. Uh, 
Okay, so now we'll go after this guy. And the reason I told my wingman to bug out is they both said they had bingo fuel, which that's basically them saying they've got barely enough back to make it to the carrier with some of the spare for landing. I believe after that comes Joker fuel, which uh, which means they have they are at the absolute bare minimum for making it back to base. So I told them to bug out, thinking they'd just go back to the carrier and, and that the MiG-29 would break off, since apparently they were having problems locking onto it. So I figured he'd just disengage as well, and then we would clean him up, but it didn't quite work that way. As you can see, the AI gets a ridiculous advantage when it comes to, uh, to climbing. I mean, granted, if we are fully loaded, fuel and weapons, yeah, I would expect the Tomcat to, uh, to not do so well in a climb versus, you know, Big 29 or any ground-based fighter, really, but we had no missiles, we had used some of our cannon, we had no external fuel tanks, we were using internal fuel, so we should have had at least somewhat close to, uh, Knock him out. to a, a 1.0 thrust to weight ratio, I would think. I'd have to look it up to be sure, but I think we would do okay in a climb. Yahoo! Versus a MiG-29 that was, uh, wow, he didn't even see us coming. Versus a MiG-29 that's sure to be full of fuel. I guess, uh, I guess this guy ran out of fuel. Wow, the AI is just being so stupid this episode. Oh, we're gonna run around until we run out of fuel. And then we're gonna crash. So, we're gonna pretend that our wingman got the MiG-29 kill and that they weren't shot down being stupid. And we're gonna pretend that helicopter didn't crash itself. I don't even know why he wouldn't have just gone back to base. He should, I mean, the carrier should be, well, they should be coming up soon. So, I mean, he could have just gone back to base. I don't know what <laughs> the AI is thinking. Uh, AI yeah, problems. Meanwhile, we still have plenty of fuel left. I know part of this is, for whatever reason, the AI will always use afterburners in combat. They, uh... They, uh... Inbound, uh, waypoint Delta, bearing oh, uh, 150, descend to Angel 4. Okay. So I don't know what quirk of the program makes them do that. Other programming makes them do that. But whenever they're engaged, they'll always have afterburners on. I think they make up for that. You know, that's why the AI control the aircraft get a performance boost. Is because the the human is smart enough to slow down and turn and quarter and all that. Whereas the AI will just you know afterburner away for the whole fight. Although it does make some fights harder than it should be. <laughs> and it's a little sad that they had to resort to that. I wish the AI could have been made smarter. Right, we'll let the autopilot bring us within 10 nautical miles. 5 nautical miles. Alright. Whoa, let's slow that. I don't want to tear our gear off. Okay, altitude is 3,000 feet. Alright, we gotta come right. We're almost home. Okay, so we're about on target now. We gotta come down probably a thousand feet or so. Sweet. 
probably reduce our throttle to a fair amount. Go right. Okay, he wants us to come to starboard again. Go right. Go right. Lower. Yeah. Lower. Lower. Call the ball. Lower. Whoa. Lower. Okay, we are way too Go. high. Lower. Lower. Oh, we gotta come around again. Ah, oh, that blows. Oh, we're a bit. Oh, that's why we're sluggish. We're finally down to the speed we should be landing at. So let's not get too fast. Probably 25% see where that takes us out. Lower your hook. Now we'll do a sharp turn back. Go left. Alright, he wants us to go left now. Go left. Go left. Go left. Go left. Go left. Go left. Fire. Go right. All right, you Go should left. be able Fire. to see him through the fog any second Get now. Back. Our Come speed on. is actually pretty darn good. Lower. On the ball. Okay. Any second. Higher. Higher. Lower. One mile. It's only a mile away. We should be able to Steady. see him soon. Lower. There he is. Lower. 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 There. Fair landing in fog? I'll take it. <laughs> so we'll park and we won't have to wait for our wingmen since our wingmen were stupid. Debrief, USSI's and RC VN-69, date May 23rd, Mission Refugee Line. Resolution, success. Nice work keeping those Ruskies off the innocent civilians. Footage from your gun camera will undoubtedly play well on international television news tonight. Thanks for providing some great propaganda. So, we took no damage, had a 50% landing grade, our wingmen were stupid, we destroyed the four targets, and unfortunately our gun footage actually won't help because we never actually saw them attacking the convoys, we took them out well before they showed up on their scopes. So our wingman killed two, uh, a MiG-29 and a MiG-21, I believe, and then uh, we had two MiG-29s, essentially, to our credit, and a pair of MiG-21s, and then an IL-76 transport, which the game classifies as a bomber. Uh, wow, only 12% of our missiles hit. Half were spoofed. 37% just outright failed, so... Actually, our wingmen had the same hit percentages as us, so looks like we just got a bad batch of missiles. 25% uh, gun hit, that's not bad, especially on air targets. So we'll uh, do the maintenance on our Tomcat, and that's all for this episode, so stay tuned for what's next. We'll see you then.